All right, and welcome. So I completed the EJPT version two uh, yesterday. Maybe wondering why I did version two. I would already have version one done from uh, quite a few years ago. Um, well, I decided to do version two mostly because of Twitch and YouTube. Uh, so you guys have donated enough to where I was able to buy it. So uh, I tried to give it back to you guys, but you guys uh, won't take it ever. You guys will never take the the different uh, giveaways, things like that. So I was able to get EJPT version two, right? And this is my review on it. Um, what I thought about it and things like that. So I wanted to very first say, just so everyone get mad from the very beginning, EJPT version one, I feel was harder than version two. All right, that's the very first thing, right? Um, the exam environment, let's talk about that for a minute. That was, uh, it was quick, it was fast, right? Worked, uh, worked plenty fast enough. Uh, I had zero problems with it. I had zero, uh, you know, it, it, it worked how it was supposed to work. It is a default build of Kali, so don't be going out there thinking that you know you have all of your tools in there and everything like that. And it does not, um, it's not connected to the internet, so you can't download new tools, things like that. So get used to using Derby, um, you know, if you're using Ferox Buster or Go Buster, some of like that, that's not on there. Uh, get used to using Vim and Nano because if you use Sublime Text, some of like that, not on there, all right? But what I did. Uh, was I decided to, let's go ahead and, you know, I made a video that's on YouTube currently under EJPT version 2, Zero to Hero. Um, and I also made some boxes, well, a box and then some other boxes to go through. So if you're new to this, something to realize is I would 100% um, also watch my EJPT Zero to Hero videos that I have. Because that will help you out a lot. Those ones like right there will help you out tons. Do you want to release this? And so I made a Windows machine for EJPT version 2 Windows training, right? I made this machine like right here. Um, that video is coming out with all of those uh, different exploits on it and things like that. It has a bunch of uh, different CMSs running on there, uh, vulnerable FTP. Um, well, you could uh, anonymous login, anonymous login through SMB, brute forcing, things like that. From there, also ICA1, you don't really have to do the privest for it, just getting into the machine, right? Just getting into it. Uh, the privest you don't need to do, and we'll get more on that later. DC1, uh, both privest and getting into it, I would say. All right, and then try hack me bolt. You notice that I picked a lot of boxes that have content management systems on there, right? So that's what you're going to be mostly looking at for this, for EJPT version two is content management systems. Uh, now let's get down into what you guys actually want to know about within EJPT version two, right? So like I said, it is web-based, okay? It's not, I did not find it very difficult. I had about three to four hours with actual hands-on keyboard. And that was with, that was during lunch, went back to work, came back and then continued it. So, you know, kind of had to think about where I left off at everything. Uh, so nothing really too hardcore there. There's really no privesk in it. Okay, so once you get into like a Windows machine, you are anti-authority system. Once you get into a, a Linux machine, uh, you're not necessarily root, but the privesk to get to root is negligible. It's not very difficult, right? So, and you'll see that throughout um, DC1 and TriHack Me Bolt, okay, which I think you actually get right into it in TriHack Me Bolt. But we go through these four four machines just to get people ready for it. It's about an hour and a half long video. I highly suggest you watch it, especially if um, you're new to this and you know, you're know you going to take it in the next few days or you just want some other training. Here's some more stuff for training that really uh, focuses on what you're going to see during the actual exam itself. What I would suggest is to start up at least the Vagrant box plus these two, all right, plus the ICA1 and DC1. I suggest you start up those and try to just do all three, right? So you have to run your MMAP, your, um, to see with MMAP tech, uh, SN, your pink sweep, to be able to see who's on, what host they're on, things like that. Uh, and then I would put all that into a file, and then from there, I would uh, run your attack IL and do attack PTAC and everything like that, right? So you can uh, scan all hosts. Uh, something else is, like I said, it was very fast. 
and all my MF scans were ran with a uh, TAC T5, so timing a five, and they all did just fine. Um, every single time you had to brute force something, if it was needed, I utilized Roku.txt and it took seconds. All right, did not take very long at all. So nothing in there crazy, right? Nothing in there that's gonna be like an hour long wait for something to happen, right? I think the longest I waited for a for something to run was actually my very first MF script. All right, or not script, but uh, my very first uh, MF that I did because I just scanned for all the hosts from there, just scanned them all. So I did a ping sweep and then scanned all the hosts and just put that into a file and just let it run. And then just kind of started to work my way down. Uh, there's 35 questions. None of them were off the wall. Like if you took EJPT version one, one of them was like, how many routers are there? But you couldn't really answer that question, you know? So none of them are really off the wall. Um, you can pretty much, you can answer every single one pretty easily. Not really too much else on this. Uh, the training for it, I, I didn't do it, but I did look at, you know, I just kind of like looked through it like real quick and it looks like it sets you up for the exam to be able to pass it pretty easily. Uh, you do get 48 hours. And like I said, it, as soon as I uh, started it, I had about three to four hours hands on keyboard. Um, it was not anything crazy. And that was also with my son being home too and watching him too. So nothing really crazy there for the time it takes to be able to actually complete the exam, right? As soon as you press start exam, it starts the exam for you. There's no wait period with that. Uh, you can use any tool you want. So you can use Metasploit, things like that. Just remember you are not connected to the internet. So anything that you have to actually research, you do have to look up on your home PC, all right? And then research from there. But copy and paste does work just like it would with a VM where you can just copy from your home PC, control shift via the terminal, and that'll paste it. don't really have too much else on it it wasn't uh it wasn't very difficult i felt like it was not difficult at all um definitely doable definitely if you do these uh four machines up here you'll you'll be pretty set up for it uh, i know that ejpt version one i have a four-part series on it this one like right here is just a one part um thing and it takes an hour and a half i think so if you go through those these four boxes you understand everything in there and you can do it easily, you can pass the EJPT version too. If you guys have any questions, leave them for me or join the Discord or whatever else. Okay? If you're wondering how do you actually get Vagrant to load, all right, let's go ahead and look at that like real quick. I have a thing on medium.com and we can go over and look at the my stories here. So if you go to overgocarrot1medium.com or Ryan Yeager Medium, uh, you will see we have, where is it at? How to run Vagrant on Windows. All right, there's the address like right there. Okay, I'll kind of zoom in on that. So it's a little bit easier to see. Maybe I won't, never mind. Yep, but there is the address like right there. So if you never ran a Vagrant box, this is how to run Vagrant on Windows. Um, another one that would be good to try is actually bash one also so i have this guy right here and then bash one would be another good one to try anything beyond those two any of the other invoke ones um those are all these are all uh active directory this one's more of a metasploitable style for active directory and then these two are vulnerable linux machines they aren't very difficult but i would be focusing on ejpt version 2 windows training and bash one if you really want to uh get more into it uh do another box but ICA1 on Vaughnhub, like I said, you don't need to do the Privesk. Just get into the machine. DC1, do the Privesk and the machine. And try Hack Me Bolt. Alright. I hope all you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, throw them in Discord. Throw them in, um, what is it? The comments. Uh, hop out of Twitch, wherever I'm on, ask questions. And yeah, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. You all have a good one. I'll talk to you all later.